Wes, I think Spencer was two for 24 or something his last healthy season and in clutch threes. Uh, how did that last play go from your perspective? It went well. Yeah. It went very well. Um, he had a rhythm. You know, I was just, we were just talking about it. At some point, everyone made, you know, big plays. Everyone had a stretch. You know, DB got going early. Um, obviously, Spencer late. Trez had a, a stretch. Coos had a stretch. Uh, so it was good to see. You know, it wasn't relying on one person. Obviously, we were missing a big piece of our offense tonight. But, you know, next man up mentality. The guy stepped up. Uh, everyone made big plays. Uh, we got a few timely stops, but uh, it's a gutsy win. You know, it's uh, wasn't perfect by no means, but uh, we'll take it. I mean, I need to learn from it. It's better to learn, obviously, after a win. But uh, to show some resilience, we get down uh, and have to kind of battle back. It's uh, it's kind of a gut check for us. Uh, you mentioned the kind of timely stretches and it was Coos coming up and, and Bertans coming up at the right times. What do you kind of attribute that to? Is it players having a good rhythm, having a good sense, or just, you know, a lot of it luck? No, I think I think some of that, you know, obviously we can put certain people in certain action, but, you know, once they kind of feel it, you see the ball go in, it takes on a life of its own. And uh, we, we got guys who can keep us organized, so they'll, they'll read the flow of it. And we did that tonight for the most part. I don't think um, I've ever seen Davis Bertans get to the rim as much as he tried to tonight and, you know, take on uh, Dorte in that ISO play. Is that something you guys have been working on or you've been kind of pushing him to say you yeah, can do this stuff? He's been doing it all preseason, actually. Um, I think he understands. He can stretch the floor, but uh, the game plan for him is a shooter. So they're going to run him off the line. So instead of settling, taking tough shots, which at times he can make, he generates a better shot by just driving, collapsing the defense and finding the open man. A lot of the guys who made plays came directly from that trade over the summer. And so I know you talked about that before a little bit, but what does it mean to have like five, like the players who were turned in the trade were basically like five legit role players. Like what does it do to have that kind of depth and for them to contribute like they did tonight? It's a tremendous asset. Um, you know, at times we have to navigate playing 10, 11 guys, and that's not easy, but to know that you have your depth, uh, somebody's in foul trouble or the game's not going well, you got another option. So it's a, it's a good problem to have. And they've all played meaningful minutes and playoff stretches. So they're, they're battle tested. So I feel uh, very comfortable, you know, with mixing and matching, you know, depending on what the night brings. Yeah. And you were kind of doing that, like in the final minute of regulation, just mixing magic profits. I know most coaches do that, but what did you, what did you like about that? Well, I mean, it, it, you want to put a guy out there, you know, at certain times to give you the opportunity to do certain things. And if he's a scorer, he can stretch the floor, do that. You know, if he's got maybe a better defensive acumen, you want him out there late. So playing with offense, defense, late game situations, um, it's, it's good for us. And I, I think you will, we'll get a better feel for who can do some of those things as we go. Speaking of depth, depth can help you withstand injuries. Um, what does it say for you guys to beat a, a pretty good team over there without Bradley Beal? Uh, I mean, it's a tribute to them. Um, we knew this morning that uh, it was probably unlikely that Brad would play. Uh, you still hold out hope <laughs> and then you, when you know for sure, but that's not our concern. I mean, it's regardless of what happens. I told those guys, we have enough in that locker room. So uh, we've got all we need. And, you know, obviously when we get guys back, we'll be better for it. But uh, it's it's a credit to their resilience and the fact that we fought and we just kept fighting and we, we gutted it out. Only nine turnovers, only one missed free throw is uh, that one near the end. Um, how important was that given the margin for error tonight? Oh, it was huge. I mean, we, we had a hard time getting stops. So, um, you know, a, any opportunity is like that is, is big. We can take care of it. Obviously, we're not beating ourselves. So at least we can generate um, a little bit of offense. Um, making the free throws at times, I think the other night against uh, our last preseason game, we, we left 10 on the table. So, you know, those are valuable points. Uh, tonight, we, we stepped up and knocked them down. Uh, Spencer's had some big shooting nights in his career, but he hasn't really been like a high efficiency guy. Um, are you seeing some growth in him maybe post injury here? I think he's just, uh, you know, getting his legs back where he's strong enough now and he knows how to play angles, um, how to create separation. He's a big guard. So even with, uh, you know, size on him, he, once he gets, you know, leverage, he can turn the corner, he can get downhill. Uh, because obviously tonight he showed he can, you know, step up and knock shots down off the bounce. I don't know. It was a. Uh, it was only a limited minutes. I think he played like ten minutes. But what did you make of Corey Kispert tonight? Oh, Corey was great, you know. And I think uh, he's one of those guys that you know 
he's a plug and play guy. You know, I've, defensively wasn't perfect, but nobody was tonight. So um, he was, he stepped up. He, he was able to, to buy us some minutes, get some guys some rest, but he was also able to hold water. He knows how to play spatially. Uh, you know, he's kind of in that vein with uh, DB. You know, he's going to drive, kick, respace. You know, when he's open, he's going to make the right, right read. And early in his career, I know for rookies, it's kind of tough acclimating. Uh, what particular keys are you looking at? Just kind of little things that he can pick up just to kind of improve as he kind of goes day by day. Well, he's improving his ball handling. And, you know, I talked at length during the preseason about his ability to cut. That's an added dimension that we didn't see in summer league. So, um, you know, it's incremental growth. But I think the game is starting to slow down for him. So uh, he knows, you know, what's an open shot. At times, you know, young players, the game feels fast. The length, the speed. Um, the athleticism of, of defenders, they feel like they're closing in on them, you know, especially as a shooter. I think he's, he's learned to slow down and make, you know, make the right reads. Um, why did you want to go with Aaron and place this feel in the lineup? Just to give us balance. You know, I think, uh, you know, having Howell, Aaron, you know, basically you have two point guards in that second group, moving uh, Spencer off the ball at times, you know, with Aaron on the floor in the starting lineup, gave us a little more flexibility. Um, it also, Gave us two guys who could really climb into the ball, be you know har harassing, um, change the tempo on that that end. What did you think of the uh, the home crowd today? The energy in the arena? It was awesome. It uh, it, it really was. And I, it's been a long time, obviously on the road the other night, but toward the end of last season, just feeling a full capacity crowd. The, the way that's the way it should be. Um, but to have that at home on a home opener, get a win like this is. This is great. We only have time for two questions, so we will go to Neil and then Christos. Hey, Coach, first at the end of regulation, when there was like 10 seconds left, did you consider taking a timeout? I did. Um, my concern was, you know, got a, got a rebound. We're pushing. We're, we're flowing. Defense wasn't necessarily set. We, we didn't get a great look, but, you know, at times you take that timeout, now allows your opponent to make substitutions, set up their defense. They can deny, switch, um, take you out of what you want to do. So it was just a, a gut call. And um, those type of situations, you just have to read it. And what was your message to the team at the, at halftime? I'm sure the first half defensively wasn't what you wanted. Oh, no, neither was the second half. <laughs> uh, but the message at halftime was, uh, was the same after the game. Uh, you know, the first team to get defense into the game will win. Um, and we got a little bit better in the second half. So uh, bottom line, you know, it, it was a gut, gut check for us, and we uh, were able to hold on and, and get it done. Thanks, Coach. Christos? Hello, Coach. Congratulations on the win tonight. How big deal for you as a team is to win games like this without your leader, Bradley Bill? Oh, you know what? It's, it's great for our group, you know, that, that – just validates the fact that, you know, our depth is important. And that depth, our flexibility is going to win us some, some games. Um, no, we don't want to be without your best player ever. But, you know, when it happens, and at times it will, um, this proves that we, we can get it done. Your first home game as a Washington Wizard, what do you think of the atmosphere? <laughs> Man, I thought it was great. Um, I didn't expect that many fans to come out, honestly, uh, just from, like, looking at preseason, you know. And... Um, Man, I was I was definitely wrong. You know, the fans that came out showed out for us. Really, really needed them, especially in those key moments. And um, you know, ended the fourth in overtime, and they helped carry us. So you know, I thought it was great. And uh, you know, we were even shocked on the bench. We were like, "Yo, it's gonna be turned up this year." So um, you know, definitely was surprising. Wes said his message to you guys once you started realizing that Brad wasn't going to be able to play was we have all that we need. How does your kind of mentality start shifting when a, a guy like Brad's going to be out and when you kind of start thinking about that? Um, it doesn't really change, honestly. Um, I, I still got to play defense. Um, I'm still trying to guard people and I'm trying to rebound as much as I can and just be aggressive. And, um, you know, that's just, you know, how I have to play every single night. And obviously some nights are going to be different than others. You know, obviously, you know, Brad being out, I can still be aggressive and my volume is going to be higher. You know, if he's in uh, playing, I might be lower, but, you know, I'm, I'm going to play the same every single, every game. So, um, yeah, no, no, really, no really switch. 
it, it seems like depth is going to be a, a potential strength for you guys this year. What does it say about your depth to win a game against a pretty good team like that without Bradley Beal? Um, I mean, uh, it was a, it was definitely a team effort. Definitely a team effort. Obviously, me and Spence had big numbers, but uh, you know, Neto came in, balled out. Uh, DB, he got out of his shooting slump and hit some big time shots for us, and especially that one to uh, you know in overtime that was huge. Uh, Trez is going to be Trez, and you know we just had great a great night, just timely defensively. Uh, we definitely need to be a lot better. You know, 134 points that's that's extremely high, but we got stops when we needed them, and you know a win is a win, and you'll take that. So. And you guys, uh, you mentioned the defense, but you did uh, limit turnovers, only nine of them, and only one missed free throw. How important was that, uh, g considering the margin for error? Um, damn, I missed the last free throw, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. Um, no, nah, that was a good night. That was definitely a good night for us. Uh, nine turnovers, you're going to give yourself a chance every single night. You can you know, keep it under 12. You know, uh, That's kind of always a general type of rule. So. Uh, you know, obviously with that, we did well, you know, could have rebound. We rebounded, you know, pretty well. You know, that's definitely an area, especially when we go small and, you know, we're playing teams that are going to go big like that or got a big horse in there like um, Sabonis. So, uh, yeah, you no, know, we gave ourselves a chance to win tonight. And um, you mentioned how Neto, he played really well tonight. What do you think of, the, what are your early impressions of him as a teammate? Um, I know last year and so far this year, just kind of the energy plays often tend to stand out. Well, I always thought he was a good ball player, um, and he's great for this ball club. So, uh, you know, going back to my days at Utah, being in college, and I used to always go to Utah Jazz games, and um, he didn't really play too much. But, you know, I thought that even back then, you know, when he got in games, um, he did pretty well. And he had just, you know, you could tell, like, tell who's a player and who's not. And um, obviously being a teammate with him um, and him having a bigger role. You know, if you look at him last year, a lot of times, um, he played the four a little bit on offense, and he could really handle the ball. He can he can set guys up, he makes a smart play, uh, and he can score. Uh, he's a very underrated scorer, and um, I think we've seen that tonight and also versus the Knicks in preseason. So uh, he's big for us. He's great, tough nosed player, plays hard, and um, you know, somebody wanted the foxhole. When a team loses like Russell Westbrook in a trade, obviously that's a great player that they have to replace, but. You know, the five of you that, that came here, all super talented. What does it do for a team to, to get that much back in return for a trade? And what do you just kind of make of the, the guys that have come here? And I mean, you got to do that trade 10 out of 10 times. You know, and if you have an opportunity to get, you know, five, you know, good basketball players for one, I mean, it makes sense. You know, granted, you know, obviously a Hall of Fame player and everything. Uh, and he's an unbelievable player. You know, don't take that wrong. But, uh, you know, especially for a team like Washington, if you, you know, look at the track record for the past couple of years, um, you know, hasn't necessarily been, you know, the ball players here. And I think that, you know, having guys, you know, obviously Spence coming in, Trez, Aaron Holiday, every, everybody, you know, everybody has a chip on their shoulder. Everybody, um, you know, played in, you know, kind of meaningful games in this NBA. And, you know, smart. You have to do it, you know, if you're a GM. I, I know you were here last year, but can you get the sense for, I mean, it's big time, you know, and it's not even about, you know, the crowd and, and the fans. And obviously that's going to come when we win ball games. But, um, you know, I, I think when the five of us came here, you know, we wanted to, you know, obviously we all have chips on our shoulders. We got a lot to prove to ourselves. And um, the most important thing is just coming in and changing the culture. You know, that's what you talk about, you know, obviously me and Pope coming here, you know, winning championships and, you know, just you, you, you have to have a certain type of mentality to play winning basketball in this, in this league and it's win because it's, it's, it's tough to win in this league. Um, you know, I've been on both sides, bad teams and, and, and championship teams. So, you know, you, it, it all starts with that, that culture and, and building something, uh, having a sturdy foundation. So. You've said that it's going to be your guys' defense that's going to take you through a really long season. Wes said it wasn't exactly where you wanted to be tonight. So, given that, what do you what do you kind of take overall from a win like this, where the defense wasn't there, but you guys were still able to kind of pull it out? I mean, uh, I think the biggest thing is just, uh, you know uh, being resilient. Uh, I, 
think that that goes a long way. That doesn't show up in box scores and it doesn't show up on defensive ratings and um, doesn't show up on uh, uh, Twitter. You know, it doesn't matter. You know, it, it's something that, you know, it's in you. And I think tonight was a great stepping stone for us. Obviously, no one's perfect. Uh, everyone's human. You're going to have uh, mistakes. And, you know, we have plenty of mistakes tonight on the defensive end, offensive end. And, um, you know, we, we just, you know, kept our head high the whole game, stayed in it, and, uh, you know, just pulled it out. And I think that's the biggest thing you can kind of take away. So, Kyle, uh, two double doubles in two games for you. Is this kind of the start you envisioned for yourself with the Wizards? Well, uh, you know, I've always kind of been a rebounder uh, going back to college. And uh, over the past three years, I've kind of, you know, been fighting AD, Brian, Dwight, and JaVale for rebounds. So, you know, having a, a situation where I don't have to fight and you know those dudes they steal a lot of rebounds so and I, I've been able to uh, just come in and just play my game and, and and just play free and um you know just do what I do you know obviously I'm going to defend and I'm going to rebound you know, that's what I hang my head on right now and um offensively I mean it it flows just try to flow so thanks yeah Neil Hey, Kuz, I'm curious, at what point in the game did you hear the crowd start chanting Kuz? Uh, I think it was early. I think it was uh, my first three, actually. My first three. You know, it was light. But, you know, it picked up. And then anything going through your head when you had the one where it went in, it came out, and then went back in again? Um, Man, just shooters bounce. Uh, I mean, that's all that really kind of happened for me. I had a couple of those tonight that went in and out, but... Uh, I'm just thankful at least one of them fell. So uh, we needed it for sure. Thanks, Goose. Congrats. Yep. Yeah. Last question to Wayne. Hey, Coos, uh, can you can you talk a little bit about you guys go down six in the overtime and just the mental toughness? Can you just talk about uh, how that helped you all um, to finish out the overtime? Um, I, well, I think if you look at the court, you know, we've had a lot of guys that are on the court that have kind of been there. You know, been in situations like that. Um, you know, Trez has played in big games. Um, obviously, me and Pope, Spence is uh, very, very dynamic and has been in this league for a long time. And, um, you know, it, we, when you get down like that, it's not the end of the world. You have to think that way. You know, obviously, certain situations you at home, you got the crowd going crazy. And then, you know, they get a layup or a three and then just all the air of the room gets sucked out. That's going to happen, but next play, you know, you have to have that type of mentality um, to win in this league and win big in this league. And uh, I'm just proud of our guys that, you know, we, we hung in there and we took blows and, um, you know, we uh, whip, withstanded them and, you know, came out top. So obviously you had a big dunk. You got to the rim a couple of times. You called Neto off your guy and, and took an ISO player on defense. Have you been working on expanding that part of your game? We're not used to seeing so much of that from well, you. Well, you didn't see that much last year. <laughs> I think mostly the years before I've been capable of doing that. You know, as you know, I wasn't in the best shape last year. And, uh, you know, that was the main goal. Just come in, get in shape, you know, put focus more on defensive end. And, you know, eventually if the offense works out, it works out. But, you know, we all know that as, uh, this was one of the exceptions that we let the other team score that much and win the game at the end. But... If we keep a team, well, it's not going to happen always like Toronto, keeping at 83, but I think if we can keep under 100, that's for a team like this, that we have so many scoring options in offense, we can actually win a lot of games that way. Um, Spencer set you up for a really nice three there in, in overtime. What have you kind of figured out or learned about just playing with him and his kind of passing ability? Well, he's a, he's a guy that, well, he can score from all three levels, but he's really quick first step. He can get to the rim and... Uh, that's that's what the moment where the defense had to collapse, and uh, you know that's that's a type of game that I enjoy actually moving around and finding the open spot and just just be ready to catch the pass when it comes. Just generally, what have you made of the additions that you guys have had, like Spencer Kuzma and all the players that you guys received in that trade? Basically, what is it like being around them and getting used to that game? Man, first of all, great guys, and uh, you know that's what Tommy's been saying, uh, and, and Ted as well. The, the goal was building a team with uh, great character guys and uh, just to have, like, first of all, a good chemistry on the team and then, uh, of course, good basketball players. That That's needed, but 
I think it's a, it's been really easy to kind of find a, a good chemistry on and off the court. Does the game like this kind of show the depth that you guys maybe lacked last year? Uh, definitely. I think the depth helps. Uh, we got basically two, some, some positions. We got three players uh, that could get minutes any night. You know, Brad was out as the next man up. Corey, Corey got his minutes. He played, he played well, I think. And yeah, like that's, that's the biggest difference that, you know, one, one goes down, we got, we got plenty of players step up. After uh, the game you had against Toronto, sort of an off shooting night, what, what did it do for you to kind of see some, the ball go through the rim early tonight? Uh, that felt good, man. The, the rim expanded a little bit after, after the first one go in and then the second one and, uh, no, definitely a good feeling, and you know, in practice, I've been shooting a lot, so it's it's nice to actually pay off uh, during the game. And and kind of how would you characterize this win, beating a good team like that without Brad? Uh, that's definitely big. As I said, you know, when he goes, like especially if your main guy goes down, you know, Spence stepped up. Uh, everybody else coming off the bench bring the energy, uh, especially being down close to the end, down six, coming back getting the overtime and the same deal in the overtime, you know, I think in the previous two seasons, if you're in that position, we kind of folded and, you know, took some bad shots and the game's over and we just prevailed, kept kept fighting and, and got the win. And what do you think about uh, how will Neto's performance tonight, just kind of the uh, the energy plays he provides off the bench? <laughs> Not just tonight. <laughs> but he's either his game or practice. He brings that energy. He's crafty. He's always been everybody's, you know, <laughs> uh, business. <laughs> he, he makes it tough for the other teams. You know, he pulls out some some crazy fadeaway, whatever those are, you know. It's just, uh, and he makes them, you know. He sees confidence, ability, and uh, that definitely helps. You know, sometimes when you feel like the offense isn't going well and you still get two points at the end or three points, it's, it's great. And after playing in empty gyms for a while, what was it like to hit that big three in overtime and throw throw up the threes and all that? Definitely, yeah, I just I just told the guys like imagine last year <laughs> you made that shot like you you're about to win the game and you just hear the speaker just like ooh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I have uh, after your stop against Duarte, do you know who Wale is, the rapper? I've heard of him, not uh, okay. to listen to his music, but uh, okay. <laughs> at least he, I know who he is. Like, yeah. he's, he's a rapper, yeah. Uh, just curious, because he went he went crazy uh, courtside there. <laughs> I don't yeah, think to follow off that. <laughs> Neil? Hey, Davis. Can you just take us through a little bit more detailed the overtime shot that you hit? You know, Spencer kind of got up in the air, was in a trouble a little bit. And then you kind of, you know, just took a step back. Is it all just fluid and you're doing your own thing or what's going through your head? Uh, well, yeah, as, uh, as Spencer was driving, I just try to keep, keep the spacing uh, on the three-point line in case he needs to throw it out. Uh, I had McConnell on me, so I think it was an easy pass for him. And yeah, after, after that, like when catching the ball, I couldn't really decide what to do, whether I'm going forward or back. And once I felt that was McConnell, you know, after that step back, it just, I like felt like nobody was guarding me at that point, and uh, it was felt like somewhat open shot. Thanks, Davis. Last question to Christos. Hey, Davis, great game. Uh, Davis, what kind of statement for you as a team is that win with the way that you won tonight and the resiliency that you showed you know, uh, against uh, the Pacers? No, I don't. Like, we don't really care about making any statements or anything. It's just... Uh, it's definitely good to start with 2-0, and oh, but uh, before this game, Brad said also, you know, forget about the previous game. We go out every night, fight, try to get a win every night, and uh, that's what matters. You know, the more, the more you forget about the wins, I think the better it is and easier it is to kind of get ready for the next one. So you had two big moments, the first one uh, to kind of tie things up for us, for us over time. What did you see from that one at the end of regulation? Um, I mean, shoot, like, we need three. So, you know, I mean, every every decision I make is based on, you know, time and score, you know, how, how the team's been playing. All those things are, are factors. So, you know, obviously, I was shooting it well tonight. We needed three, time and score, get one up. 
I'm saying, trying to give us two for one opportunity. Um, you know, simple as that. You guys have kind of been saying that it's going to be your defense that carries you throughout the season, but to get a win like this tonight with the offense and kind of everybody pitching in, what do you take away from that, especially at this point in the season? Um, it, was, it was good to have everybody click, especially with Brad out. Um, you know, we, we needed obviously every single point. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, just, just collective effort. I think, you know, along with our defense, that'll be a calling card. Um, it'll be, you know, welcome when Brad gets back because obviously the juggernaut score. Um, but we, we need everybody um, doing their job. Besides the obvious, the ball going in the basket, what was working for your three-pointer tonight? <laughs> Sorry. No, I mean, uh, I guess you kind of took away my answer. Uh, no, I mean, I think, you know, people are going to guard me a little bit softer because, you know, they don't want me in, in the paint and getting layups or, or throwing lobs to, to our big. So, you know, being a little bit taller um, and with the work that, you know, I've put in over on my jumper over the course of my rehab process, understanding, you know, saying the longevity of my career, like, just got to trust your trust your process, let, let it fly and live with the misses. And what would... What, did, what was that work like to go into your jumper? Like, what are kind of some of the things you did? Oh, I mean, I, I've been training with uh, my uncle Owen Simplis since I was probably like 11 years old. Um, we always try to be hypercritical of my game, add new things, um, look at what I'm good at, not good at. Obviously, shooting threes off the dribble is, is something that, you know, I haven't been good at in the past. And, and we really worked on that. Um, you know, while, while you're in the rehab process and you're not doing a lot of explosive stuff, what you can do is get up shots in different situations and, and just try to drill that. And it doesn't mean I'm going to turn to Steph Curry overnight, but, you know, you want to consistently improve. And, you know, I've been in the league eight years and want to be in the league, you know, another eight. So, you know, want to want to keep getting better. So what does it mean for you to see those results? I mean, look, he's one of the best trainers in the game. I feel like I've improved every year of my career going back to 11 years old. You know what I'm saying? So uh, a lot of credit to him. Um, I, I mean, I'm not I'm not surprised by improvement because I know the work uh, that I put in, but I also know the tutelage that, you know, I've been blessed to, you know, be under bat, both basketball-wise and also, you know, my body and, you know, Mike G, Barrett, Fabrice, all, all those guys, Craig Sanchez, everybody that you know, was a part of this. Spencer, with Brad out today, uh, did you take it upon yourself to be the number one scoring option? Um, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say number one scoring option necessarily, uh, but more aggressive for sure. You know, you you take out your your number one, not just score, but you know, probably playmaker, just in terms of the amount of havoc that he wreaks. And you know, that's what I was brought in here to do is to be the secondary playmaker. So if your primary is out, then your secondary has to play better. And you know. It, it could have been Kuz scoring the most. It could have been Trez scoring the most again. And maybe I end up with, you know, 12, 13 assists. But my job is to be aggressive. Gail? Hey, Spencer, what did you think about the crowd tonight? Oh, no, nah, I mean, shoot, I was, I was pleasantly surprised. I ain't going to lie. I was a little, a little worried, like, in the preseason because, like, I could hear myself talk. But yeah, y'all y'all went crazy. So, hey, two and zero. Oh, let's keep it rocking. And does it do anything for you know momentum to another level? Just that you guys were able to have such a thrilling win without you know your best player. Um. Yeah. Of course. I, I think you know home opener, crowd carrying us, big shots all the way around. Um. You know, high scoring game. So it was a fun game. It wasn't you know a grind out like 80, 85 game. Um, it was was fun all the way around, uh, but to to reach our our highest ceiling, like obviously we need Brad. We're gonna need the best version of Brad. We're gonna need, you know, possibly league leading score, first team All NBA Brad. So, you know, we're we're definitely looking forward to him returning soon. Thanks, Spencer. Chris Ellis. Hey Spencer, great game first of all. Uh, what it means that win and the way that you want to add, what kind of boost you get from that win? Um, I mean, I think I have a very pragmatic approach of not getting too high or too low, but I do understand that, you know, from what Brad's told us that, you know, they haven't been one and in a while. And, and obviously that means you haven't been two and in a while. So, you know, I, I think it's good to be, uh, have some healthy excitement. Um, but you know, it's a long season, man. Like I'm sure there's teams that started off two and zero before and, 
you know, miss the playoffs. So we we have a we have a long way to go. And and that's coming from a guy that's been, you know, on a Nets team that was awful and won like 20 games and also was a part of, you know, obviously uh, a Nets team that was expected to win the championship. So, you know, it's there there's there's been varied experience there. And for you, how comfortable do you feel when you have the ball in your hand or you take the shot in crunch time? How comfortable do you feel in those times? See, I don't think a lot of people know, like back in 1920 and uh 18, 19, like there was like a stat, like I was like the league leader in like game winners and stuff like that. So it's it's not something new. And look, I get it, like I'm not the sexiest name and nor do I subscribe to B or you know what I'm saying, I ain't Dame or Steph or none of those guys, but Like those things have happened. The, the proof is in the pudding. Like game winning shots, like we can go on YouTube and look at that. And you know, if Brad's out, I probably will be the one taking those. Um, most times I would say if Brad is in, then that's that's his shot to take, you know, or his play to make. Uh so you just understand what's the best shot for our team. But it ain't no fear in those moments. Like, in my opinion, I'm one of, if not the best in the league at it. Kuzma was saying he was surprised by the crowd as well after he mentioned the same thing with the preseason and Montrez the other day you know with the being surprised with the one and oh it was there some sort of a, like adjustment for the new guys on this team to like all right like did you kind of know what not know what to expect basically being in a new city yeah I mean look when when you're on an NBA team you get really locked into that specific team um but it's not like you're studying the history of every other team. You, you, you study the current players and attendances and things like that. But, you know, I wasn't locked into like the Washington Woods history. So I wouldn't know whether, you know, they had a bunch of one and all starts or not. So, you know, when, when that was brought up, you know, it was news to us. And you know, I think that goes for any NBA player in any situation. And our job is as newcomers is to try to, you know, continue to build the culture that, you know, is kind of laid forth for us by, you know, coach, coach on sale. And then also obviously uh, Brad himself. So, and well, and Shep too, who brought us here. So, you know, under the, under the guidance of those three, like we're trying to help establish a foundation. So, you know, but, but knowing the history in general, like that's probably not what we're going to know.